Good morning, Dos Pueblos. And welcome to our first ever monthly DP News Magazine show. It's similar to our regular show, but a little longer as we'll take a deeper dive into stories happening in our community beyond DP. These magazine shows will be available on the first Wednesday of every month, so we hope you enjoy this change of pace from our normal show. In today's show, we'll be talking about a local high school student who continues his love for hockey as a referee, a downtown donut shop that brings new taste to the donut game, a podcast on how this season of women's NCAA basketball is revolutionizing the game, a high school barber changing the business one cut at a time, and a strong dual sport athlete with an even stronger mentality. Well, Sophia, I can't wait to get started on today's show. I agree, Aiden, and we can't wait for you to see it. So let's get started. I'm Aiden Myers. I'm Sophia Pixley. We're going beyond DP. And it starts now. now. Strap on your skates and grab your sticks because we're hitting the ice with a student referee who's ruling the rink with finesse. Get ready to puck drop into our first story of the day with DP News reporter Trevor Cuevas. During a hockey game, referees are important to ensure the game is played fairly and respectfully. While most referees only oversee adult leagues here at Ice and Paradise, Noah Perez works hard to share his love for the sport with a younger generation. It was, it was really hard to learn as a ref, especially, I, I started with YHL, but even that was intimidating and it was really hard to get confident about it because I have all these parents watching me and they all want their kid to, to succeed and to have fun and that's kind of on me because if a kid falls and gets hurt, and I don't stop the play, that's on me. Um, it is fun to see all the little kids who are just getting the hockey, like learn to love it like I do. And they get so like happy when they score a goal, even if it even if it was a weird goal or if it like they don't really care. And last week I had a kid come up to me so excited because he scored a goal. He was like, did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? And it made me so happy. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, it is. Did I score? Yeah, you did. You gotta cover it with your pad, right? So just the little stuff like that for YHL, that's really, it's, it, it makes it a lot more fun for me. While he does enjoy working at youth games, his primary job is dropping pucks and making calls for the faster paced players in the adult leagues. There are two teams that, when they go against each other, it gets really, really competitive, and they usually end up getting really snippy with each other and um, like fighting each other. So that's those are the fun games to ref, actually. But other than that, it's a bigger league for them, so they're out there to have fun after a long day of work or something, and um, just have fun with their friends. That was the cleanest puck drop in the entire world. While Noah doesn't play hockey himself anymore, he stays connected to the sport in the best way that he can. Noah's connection to hockey is shown through every whistleblow and call made. For DP News, this has been Trevor Cuevas reporting. Keep it up, Theo. Noah really shows us how you can stay connected to your sport, even if that means you're not playing anymore. Prepare your taste buds for a sugary sensation because next we're diving into a story that's sure to leave you craving more. Get ready to indulge in the sweet world of fancy donuts at a downtown donut shop. DP News reporter Sophia Pixley takes us there now. Hook and Press is a locally owned and operated donut shop located in the heart of downtown Santa Barbara. Co-owners John Burnett and his wife Denise work relentlessly in crafting the perfect donuts and creating a unique experience for everyone. Uh, one morning on like a road trip, we were leaving at like six o'clock in the morning and I was like, man, I wish I had like good donuts in this town. Really wish we could get some good donuts. And it's like, that's it. Early on, I had a cottage food permit and I was making the donuts out of my house. I had an opportunity to be one of the partners in a space, a shared space called Mosaic. 
it gave me a chance to to take the next step it was probably looking back it was probably the only way that i was ever going to be able to get to this point it's the cozy charm of small donut shops like Hook and Press that keep customers coming back for more. First impressions, it was good. It was really nice and clean, and their service is great. Their attention to like helping you out and like explaining the different types of donuts and like the varieties they have, and it's a really nice, clean place, especially for studying and like just talking with friends. So I would choose Hook and Press versus like other chain stores because the quality is really nice and like they pay attention, focus to detail, and their menus do change every week, so it gives you something new to try. Donut shops are the perfect way to whisk away stress and enjoy a good sprinkle top delight. I mean, adults and kids alike, like as soon as they walk through the door, it's like everything they've been dealing with, they're like, it's gone and they're just like, oh, donuts, you know, and I love that. I feel like that part of this business gives my life meaning because it's so much deeper than just dough with sugar on it, you know, where I'm actually providing like a happy place for the community. Um, not to mention that we're able to raise tons of money for what? different charities and schools and um, nonprofits throughout Santa Barbara. Hook and Press is crafting a delicious future where every bite is a glimpse of sweetness yet to come. I think the most exciting thing that we're working on right now is expansion. In the short term, I'm pretty excited we're partnering up with Lighthouse Coffee. So we're going to be in all the Lighthouse Coffees um, from here to Goleta. In a world full of worries, Hook and Press has really proved itself to be a sweet relief for the community, spreading joy with every bite. Thank you. Reporting for DP News, I'm Sophia Pixley. That's a wrap on our delectable journey through the land of fancy donuts. From sprinkles to swirls, this local shop is serving up sweetness with a side of style. Don't go anywhere because we've got more mouthwatering moments coming your way. In our next story, we'll bring you a special segment delving into the exhilarating journey of this year's historic women's NCAA basketball season. That's right, Aiden. It's been a season filled with awe-inspiring performances and unforgettable moments, with standout players like Caitlin Clark capturing the hearts of fans nationwide. Absolutely, Sophia. And in our exclusive podcast feature with Jude and yourself, we dive into the highlights, the record breakers, and the impact of these phenomenal athletes on the game. Let's take a closer look. Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, Angel Reese. Five years ago, these names would have meant nothing to you. But now, these three are revolutionizing women's basketball at this very second. Here comes Clark. How will she go for history? There it is! Beckers for three. Got it! That's an undefeated South Carolina has won its third national championship. I'm Jude. I'm Sophia. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to the Goodland Good Podcast. Podcast. Two thousand six hundred eighty-five was the number of points Iowa's Caitlin Clark scored to become the all-time leading scorer for both women's and men's Division One basketball. Eight hundred thirty-seven was how many points it took Paige Beckers to become the second most points scored for UConn, and she'll be looking to break that early next year, as it'll be her last year before declaring for the draft. Sophia, with all these records made, this season for women's basketball has been the most memorable. I agree. Before this year, women's basketball was never on my TikTok for you page or Instagram reels, and now I see multiple videos every day. For sure, the impact this season has had on social media is really interesting. It's new to see as men's basketball has always been the prominent in the media. Yeah, Caitlin Clark talked about this as she had a great interview with Iowa's sport podcast group Iowa Everywhere, where she talked about the double standard between men's and women's sports and her thoughts about it. Yeah, and I think that's part of the evolution of the women's game that still needs to occur. I think, you know, people need to start understanding that women can play with that same passion, that competitive spirit that men have played with for years. Um, and that's what's attracting people to our game is when women are, you know, fiery, when they're competitive, when they're feisty, um, when they're encouraging their teammates, you know, that's what people want to watch. I think that's the reason we have 15,000 people come in Carver every single night is because not only am I passionate and competitive, but so is my team. Now we're here with Justine Katz, varsity captain of Dos Pueblos girls basketball team. Justine, seeing the growth in popularity in women's college basketball this year, what does this mean for someone like you who has a very bright basketball career ahead of them? It's very exciting. It's good to know that people are finally recognizing it and seeing how fun it can be to watch. So it's just kind of exciting to see that maybe when I'm playing in college, there will be more people noticing it and coming to see me play. Jude, I was watching an interview the other day when I heard Shaq say, and I quote, I'm only watching women's college basketball this year because this year is just a better game. I know you're a big basketball fan yourself. What do you think it means for this big of an NBA superstar to show love to women's basketball? 
I mean, Shaq is just such a prominent figure in NBA, and I've, you know, never really heard him talk about women's basketball. I know he does the producing, and he uh, he commentates with some um, WNBA stars, but it's just great to see him, like, show love to the, to especially college women's basketball as well, and just to see that, you know, Caitlin Clark and Andrew Reese, all these people changing the game, it just really shows the growth of and, and where it's going. Justine, do you think this had an impact on the game, and what do you think sparked popularity in women's basketball this year? Um, I think just the high level of play and players like Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers are just so entertaining to watch and people are realizing how good they are. So entertaining to see what they can do and how far they'll go. And it's great to see that Iowa has been showing lots of love to women's basketball as they put number 22 on the floorboard where she broke the all-time scoring record for men's and women's. Sophia, you're a woman athlete yourself. You played flag football. How do you feel about this recognition towards women's sports? I think it's really cool that women's basketball is getting a lot more recognized this year because with me for flag football, it was our first year at the school with this sport, and a lot of people at first wouldn't take us seriously, so I think that correlates a lot with women's basketball versus men's. And I think it was really similar between basketball and flag, how we both showed out. Sophia, another fact about this year's women's college basketball, they actually outdrew the men's championship with an average of 18.9 million viewers. That was also more viewers than last year's World Series and the NBA Finals. I think it's really crazy seeing all these stats put together in one to hear about the World Series and the NBA Finals. Justin, you tell us about the records you broke at DP and how it felt knowing you had such a big impact on DP basketball. Yeah, um, I broke all the records on senior night, so that was really crazy. I got 11 three-pointers that game, which is the three-point record in the game. And then I also got 38 points, which is the record for points in one game for girls. And then that night I also hit my 1,000th career point. So it was just really exciting to get it all in one day. And all the support I got was just made it even better. Sophia, I have a question for you. Do you think women's basketball will ever surpass or eventually catch men's basketball in popularity? I really hope it does. I think it will. Um, from this year alone, uh, I think they show that they, they definitely have what it takes to pass them in popularity. From what I've seen all over social media, they're really popular this year. And yeah, I hope they do. I feel like they will. I can see that happening in the future. What do you think, Jude? Well, going into this year's WNBA draft, I know that there's been a lot of uh, players such as Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese declaring for the draft this year, but I know that the team that's drafting Caitlin Clark, they actually reserved a larger arena uh, because they're expecting for her first debut WNBA game to be sold out. So, I mean, I feel like with these new stars coming in and more stars coming in next year's draft and the drafts after that, I feel like there's a chance. There's definitely a big chance. Now we're here with Dos Pueblos Girls flag football coach, Coach Keynes. So what has been your experience tuning in to watching women's college basketball this season? You know, to be honest, I never really watched the women's tournament. I just, I didn't follow it. I, I wasn't paying attention to it. You know, I'm a father of two daughters and I like basketball. I'm a casual fan, but I just didn't have time for it. And I didn't have a choice this year. The storylines between Caitlin Clark and, um, Angela Reese and, and some of the South Carolina players. Like, I know more about women's college basketball this one year than I have in my entire life. It was so interesting to follow the, the stars and the players were big time. I felt like before there was not the, the star power, the star factor, but um, the players in, the, in, in college basketball made it so that they couldn't be ignored. The storylines were so big. Um, it was spectacular to watch. It was awesome to see some of these big matchups in the in the final four in the finals with so much more talent emerging at the collegiate level we can expect even more excitement in the years to come definitely sophia let's also not underestimate the crucial role of coaching and shaping these young athletes such as iowa's women's basketball coach lisa blutter they've been such an instrumental piece in not only developing their skills but also nurturing their leadership abilities with the women's college basketball season now over i can't wait to see what stars we see next season and who comes out on top that's right, Jude. Next season is going to be something else. I can't wait, Sophia, but that's it for us. I'm Jude. I'm Sophia. And, and this, this is The, the Good, Good Land, Land Podcast. Podcast. Back from the court, it's clear that this year's NCAA women's basketball season has rewritten the playbook, setting new standards of excellence and inspiring a new generation of players. Spot on, Sophia. In our next story, we'll meet a student barber who's trimming his way to greatness and buzzing with talent both inside and outside the classroom. 
Meet Jay Buns, a talented underground barber. DP News reporter Aiden Myers brings us that story. I'm pointing the chair. Students in Santa Barbara have all sorts of different hobbies after school. For some, it's playing a sport. For others, it's learning an instrument. But for Jack Esteban, it's being the owner and an operator of his own barbershop out of his garage. You know, I was 15 when I started cutting hair. I, I just started because I used to get messed up pretty bad. Then I just had the passion to cut hair because I liked it. It was kind of like art. In the beginning, it was just like seeing people at school like with my haircut that I did. And then I was like, ooh, you know. First person I cut was my grandpa. And, and he didn't really mind because, I mean, he's old and he didn't really care about his hair no more. But and then after was uh, my dad. Then the homies at school, actually, and then the real ones, remember, like back in the woodshop class. Or, yeah, there you go. When I'm cutting hair, I just, I want to make sure my, my client's really comfortable. I don't want him feeling awkward or anything, because that, that's worse than the haircut, honestly. Like, I just, I'd rather have my client feeling comfortable than, than a bad haircut. I started making my studio last year when I started cutting hair. Um, it's little by little, like I just got a couch and I just, I got some LED lights. I got some new clippers actually. I would say that's my biggest struggle right now, just balancing everything out pretty smoothly. And it's good practice for, for when I'm older. I don't know how to keep time management because time is the most important thing. My plan after high school is I'm going to study business. Oh, well, you know, because I'm going to get that shop. That shop's going to come soon. And it's only going to be bigger after this because this is just the beginning. The future is looking bright for young Jack Esteban. Don't be afraid to hit him up if you need a cut. Reporting for DP News, I'm Ada Myers. It's clear that Jay Blends isn't just a student cutting hair. He's turning heads and making waves right here in our school with his sharp skills and signature style. Snaps to that, Aiden. Diving into the world of dual sport athleticism, we follow the journey of one remarkable high school athlete who's spiking her way to success on both the beach and indoor volleyball courts. Hallie Reilly's unmatched determination and relentless work ethic are propelling her towards her dreams of going D1. DP News reporter Jude Cotty brings us her story. a lot more fun when I play with Hallie. Her being my partner motivates me to work harder. I love playing with her. She's just always really positive, so she's just a great teammate to be able to be with. So I always look forward to being on team with her because I know every time she's going to get on the court, she's just going to try her hardest and uplift everyone around her. is a fantastic player. She's a fantastic mentor to the rest of the team. I think she's a very steady presence and a calm presence. So um, players can kind of rally around her and, and you know go to her for moral support. Um, I'm with them all the time. So, you know, every once in a while we kind of beef, but we settle it pretty easy because I know we have to get back out on the court together and work hard with each other. So we have a good relationship, we work hard, and we try and make each other better. Holly got an amazing day. Let's go. Chargers for life. Heck yeah, Royals. <laughs> I don't like losing, so whenever I go for something, I always try my hardest and I want to be the best at it. Losing is just not what I like doing, so. I think playing with her has made it a lot better to play and a lot more fun to play because she's just a really fun person to just be around and she's always able, like I said before, to just push me to do better. So she's always going to, like for indoor, she's always going to try to get me the ball and that helps me work on getting up and all of that is just she's working her hardest to uplift the people around her. I know whenever I give the ball to her, she can put it away. And if she doesn't the first time, then I go back to her. 
We know how to push each other without going too hard, so we can really make each other better. That's my queen. That's a what? My queen. That's your queen? Yeah. But the end goal is to go D1 somewhere. <laughs> Hallie really shows that her dedication knows no bounds. She's proving that with determination and a strong mentality, the sky's the limit for this exceptional athlete. Well, that's all for our first episode of Beyond DP. We hope to see you next month. And thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.